world is full of myths and legends. The Loch Ness Monster, the Earth is flat, and that I won several stages of the Tour de France. Some of them are true, and some of them just exist in the heads of misguided but very good looking dreamers. But what about these myths and legends associated specifically with cycling? Just what can and can't we believe? Well, it needs no introduction. It's that old classic. Yeah, it just becomes a meaningless noise to me. Well, actually, this is sort of true. Not the bit about cyclists not being on the road, of course, but the paying road tax bit. It may well be hair splitting, but no one in the UK pays road tax. What motorists actually pay is vehicle excise duty, which is a tax on emissions. The bigger the engine, the more pollutants it emits and the more VED you pay. Simples. Cyclists, on the other hand, don't create any emissions, so therefore we don't need to pay it. It's exactly the same with electric vehicles. Even though this is the case, it doesn't stop hundreds of thousands of people using the lack of so-called road tax to support the argument that bikes don't belong on the road. Now the ugly Siamese twin argument that's forever connected to this road tax nonsense is the myth that roads were built for cars. But just think about that for a second. Here in the UK at least, most of our A and B roads date back hundreds if not thousands of years. Some of them were built by the Romans for heaven's sake. In those days, the main traffic was by foot or by horse. And then about 150 years ago, someone invented the bicycle. And the early cyclists didn't really enjoy riding on the rough tracks that the horse riders and walkers used. So they campaigned to have them paved. Then along came the car, which started using these nice, convenient, smooth roads. And they've been claiming them as their own ever since. You're welcome, motorists. Apparently, you can get points on your driving license for breaking the speed limit on your bike. Another myth, I'm afraid. However, that doesn't mean that you aren't breaking the law and you can't be punished for it. Believe it or not, as incredible as it sounds, here in the UK, the speed limit on roads does not apply to cyclists. It has something to do with not having a speedometer fitted to your bike as standard. In theory, you could literally cycle past a traffic cop with a camera doing 70 in a 30 mile an hour zone while talking on your phone, and you will not get a speeding ticket or one for phone use. What you most likely will receive though is a spot fine for careless or dangerous cycling, which carries a maximum penalty of £2,500. And just like in a car, you can also receive a fine of up to £1,000 for cycling under the influence of alcohol or drugs, although you're not legally obliged to perform a breathalyzer test. Connected to all of this is the myth that cycling is dangerous. Well, I have to admit that this one is a little bit like Schrodinger's cat in the sense that it both is and isn't dangerous at the same time. Cycling, like anything in life, has its risks. Cycle in a busy city centre during rush hour and as you would expect, the risk will increase. By contrast, cycle on a quiet country lane on a Sunday morning and that risk should, under normal circumstances, reduce. Sadly, it will never get down to zero whatever you do, and unfortunately there's no way to sugarcoat it, but approximately 100 cyclists die on British roads per year, and many more are injured. However, this isn't a good reason not to cycle, particularly when you factor in the risk to your health posed by inactivity. According to the British Heart Foundation, 
around 7,500 people die each year through lack of exercise, which means that statistically speaking, you're 75 times more likely to die being a couch potato than being a cyclist. Yeah, but cycling is expensive. Well, again, we're kind of into Schrodinger's cat territory. It can be as expensive or as budget friendly as you want. Buy a brand new Pinarello Dogma with DI2 and ultralight carbon wheels, complete with the limited edition Rafa jersey, bib shorts, super duper cycling shoes, fancy crash hat, Oakley shades, and the latest all singing, all dancing cycling computer, and you're probably looking at the thick end of about 10 grand. Now we all know someone like that, but I would humbly suggest that if you aren't some kind of semi-pro or filthy rich billionaire, you've just wasted a small fortune. A visit to my local chain bike retailer, <coughs> Halfords, has revealed that you can get on the road with their cheapest brand new bike for about 130 pounds. If you were to look around though, you could probably find something much cheaper second hand. The cheapest bike that I personally own is my old clunker mountain bike, which was given to me by one of my chums and was completely free. Okay, I'm not going to win any races on it. I'm not going to win any races on that fancy Pinarello come to think of it, but it will get you on the road get your heart pumping, and probably even save you a few quid if you used it to ride to work instead of driving. And then with the money that you've saved, you can invest something better. Some companies here in the UK even have a bike to work scheme that ends up buying the bike for you. And as for what to wear, no, you don't have to wear all the Lycra. If you feel more comfortable wearing tracky bottoms and a t-shirt, wear those. Many people are worried about taking up cycling because of the myth that you have to be fit to do it. But again, just think about this for a moment. One of the reasons to take up cycling is actually to improve your fitness. So it doesn't matter where you start. And yes, it might make your ass sore for a while, but that won't last long. Once those buttock muscles develop, you won't feel a thing. Now, although I've been talking about myths, the one thing in my mind that I believe is completely true is that getting on a bike is probably one of the biggest favors you can do for yourself. Not only will you get some exercise, get fitter and improve your mental health, you'll be doing wonders for the planet as well by reducing pollution. And who knows, you might even have some fun, but keep that one to yourself because the government might just put a tax on it. Thanks for watching.